Hi, people. Would you like to visit me in my lair today? Um, actually, I shall visit you in yours, ironically. Ha <laughs> ha! Wow. These cold opens are getting tough, let me tell you, folks. There's a lot of journal articles left out there to cover. I have no idea what we're eventually going to get into, but hopefully it's all functional. <laughs> Sorry. Functional communication training. A review and practical guide. Tiger. Hanley. We've had stuff from Hanley before, haven't we? Oh, didn't he do ISCA stuff? Uh huh. Wow. All right. Um, Which is all about FCT as part of an FBA. That. Science is cool. Like, sometimes you just get those moments in life where shit just you get tinklies. It's like an ASMR. Um, and, like, I'm getting the tinklies over the journal articles linking up together. <laughs> because I didn't put that together all the time, folks. Um, the secrets of being faculty. <clears throat> These things happen in your office, not often in front of students. We just took our office and put it out there for you so you can see all the bullshit that really happens. Okay, here we go. Um, Tiger, Hanley, whoo go Hanley. Um, Bruze, br 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 I don't know what it is with me and names, and I always throw one out there that I can't do. Um, review of the literature. This was kind of cool. So this is this gives me an opportunity to talk about something other than a journal article um, and get back into something that I find very cool. Um, so anyway, what this was was literally a review of the literature. This is one of those little gems. It's just this little golden little thing hiding out there. Um, because it's not just a study of a technique or something like that. It's literally reviewing the existing literature. And that's what's amazing. There are 204 subjects in here, 91 articles, right? So at first glance, like, oh, they had 204 subjects. Sweet, they've got averages. No, 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 no. This is Sidman's dream world. This is what happens when you do basic research well, when you do um, single subject design properly. Hey, Monk. Come here. Hey, Bob. Hi. Hi. You just, that's you just a form of FCT. That is a big form of FCT. Oh, yeah. they're all coming. Oh, come here, Eddie. Come on. Come on. You're all wet. The other dog's been licking you again. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Who's going to lay down? We're going to get the other one in. Oh, Indy. Come here. Everybody's come on. Here. Oh, it's so great. They're all here. All the buddies are here. I think they were getting microphones today. <laughs> I, this is dream level data. Like, yes. Oh my gosh. Are you going to join me? Yes. This is on plan. You're a big dog and you're going to join me too, aren't you? So that's communication training and it's best right there. And one's gone. Yeah. Mocha's the old one, by the way, folks. And she's the one that opens the door. It's a sliding door and she just sits there and kind of claws out and it, and it opens. She's going to lay down on the tripod. Mocha, come here. Come on. Not you're not Mocha, you're Indy. Come here. And right on the tripod. Watch, the camera's gonna shake. Ha <laughs> ha! Mocha. Really? <laughs> this video is being extended because life is good and we have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Mocha. Nope. You deaf thing. Come here. You're not Mocha. Like I... good girl. You here. Behavior analysts shouldn't own pets. No, for those playing at home, an EO needs to be present. Oh, there we oh, go. Yeah, there hit the tripod. Yeah, there we go. The eagle has landed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mocha, that does not look comfortable. No, oh, but. She's in the middle, and I guess that's what matters. Oh, here comes the other furry beast. Jesus. Let's get back on track here. So, what I was saying was, was about, um, wow. See, you probably don't remember what we were talking about. So, we're going to talk about SIB, and we're going to talk about single subject research a little bit, because this is what I like to see in the literature, um, is over time, you do this single subject analysis, right? Stop messing with the microphone. With a single subject analysis, and it, it ends up to where you have only just a couple of subjects per study, right? And everybody goes, well, what about generality? What about external validity? It happens later, folks. It happens when you get down to this point where you're reviewing the existing literature. Now you start to have that external validity, right? So we, so when these, when this team of authors reviewed the 291 articles, 
across 204 subjects, now we're establishing some generality. I know it's not really related to the article, but it's a situation that happens, happens, happens every now and again where you get a chance to talk about those things that you don't always see, um, especially when you're just presenting it from a textbook. So in this case, you do get that big, big picture look at um, of systematic replication, of intra and intersubject replication, and all of those pieces are what is really going on here. So um, that said, this is a really easy to understand article, uh, and it really does cover the literature on functional communication training from the original Carr article in 1985 up until 2006 or through 2006. So they, they looked at all sorts of different behaviors. Um, of course, all the journal articles that were reviewed covered all the behaviors, tons of stuff, aggression, stereotypic, bizarre vocalizations, which we've covered those, um, inappropriate sexual behavior, self-injury, um, and all of the, the one thing that they did look for across all these, uh, or one of the trends that they found was that they're all some sort of social reinforcement involved. As a result, they knew where to target their interventions um, or the functional communication training, because if you recall, functional communication training is about teaching you a response that replaces, a, um, t teaching you some type of communicative response, either that through a vocalization or through signing or even showing cards, right? Um, whatever it may be, um, but it replaces another problem behavior on the same function, okay? So that's functional communication training. Um, so they kind of review and they looked at all these different categories. There were six different things. So um, we'll throw them up on the screen as we go here so you don't have to listen to my words. Um, but they based it, the first one right off the bat, functional analysis of the problem behavior. Figure out what's maintaining it, right? Oh, okay, we don't need to talk about anything else because you get it. That's a pretty obvious one. Um, two, selecting... Um, uh, communication response topography. It's really important to make sure that you identify a topography that works for the particular client that you're working with because response effort must be low, right? So if the response effort for the appropriate response is lower than the response effort for the problem response, then you're more likely to get that, that the appropriate response. Uh, why? Well, this is something we understand from matching law, right? So anyway, we can go there. Social recognition of the response. This is essentially a behavior trap, right? So what you want to do is make sure that it's easy to uh, reinforce the appropriate response, the one that's the FCT response versus the problem behavior response. Um, so again, essentially a trap. Don't make it just arbitrary. Make it functional for this person in their world. Like make it useful. Make it useful for other people around them. Um, I want a break or showing a break card. My break card says break on it. Like okay. Like my you know my kiddo he does homeschool uh, homeschool stuff, but because of COVID whatever. Anyway, um, he's online and I don't care. You know you got your periods. You had six periods a day, but if he wants a break, just take a break. So he's been taught. To all he has to do is ask for a break. Hey, Andy, you can listen. I don't care. Just leave my stuff alone. Uh, good dog. She's so fuzzy. How can you not? That is so reinforcing. <laughs> and then you're just going to sit there the whole time and be cute. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's see. Who should implement functional communication training? Anyone. That's really not what they say. Um, basically, there's two different approaches that you can take here. Having the, essentially the caregiver do it or the highly trained researcher, right? Um, so what I wrote down here is environment and setting are the queens. Um, in other words, the environment that you're operating in and the setting that the client is in is what's really the most important. Um, if you end up with a highly controlled environment, that's great. Um, you're going to be able to teach this pretty efficiently uh, or teach the FCT stuff pretty efficiently, um, but it might not generalize, right? And we'll deal with that one later. Uh, and then within the natural setting, um, our, uh, that's awesome, but it's going to take you a lot longer to teach it because somebody's not going to be an expert at it. So there, there's trade-offs on all this stuff. Promote generalization. Surprise, surprise. Go look at our videos on generalization and you'll understand why you need to promote it. Anyway, um, how to teach the response. You teach it how you teach it. No joke. Control versus natural, same scenario, right? So, or contrived versus natural, the same thing as before. If you use contrived settings and or contrived environments and you teach this thing um, in hyper rigid ways, it's not going to generalize very well, but it's going to be fast. So, you can teach them the response pretty quickly. In the natural environment, or you use natural. Um, um, teaching methods, um, it's going to be slower to develop, but will generalize automatically. So all of this stuff has support. Whichever way you look at it, you can do these in multiple th in multiple ways. Um, but of course, you got to worry about prompting and fading. So make sure you do your, your fading out your prompting along the way. And they talk about how to do all that stuff. Anyway, uh, selecting consequences for problem behaviors. So you have three choices for problem behaviors. You can put them on extinction, you can reinforce the problem behavior, or you can punish the problem behavior. Punishment of problem behavior, 
there's evidence of it, it works. Um, however, ethical, neat, weird stuff, watch videos on punishment, read, figure out if you're gonna use it or not. Like, um, it's an ethical thing. So, but it, there's evidence that says it works. Extinction! Extinction is almost always used in FCT, at least in the literature, um, but sometimes reinforcement of the problem behavior must continue to occur, especially if you're out in the environment and you can't put a behavior on extinction because something like, I don't know, peer attention. Good, how are you going to extinguish a peer's response? Like, you, or a, a, a peer attention, you can't. Sometimes you just can't put things on extinction. When those types of scenarios happen, the problem behavior is still being reinforced. Really what your situation is set up now is a competing contingency in order to um, reduce the problem behavior and increase the, the, the functional response, the, the FCT stuff. So when you do that, now you gotta make the functional response more reinforcing and blah, blah, blah. Otherwise the problem response is going to win out because the reinforcers win. Um, let's see what else. Thinning the reinforcement. Continuous reinforcement is how you start. Thin it out, right? Um, time delays um, to reinforcement, so adding a gap uh, from the time that the appropriate behavior happens to you get the reinforcer for it. It's one of the most common ways in the literature, according to these authors, um, but then they also said that there is evidence that signaling that the reinforcement is coming um, during that absence of reinforcement is an important tool as well. Um, although watch out for resurgence. If you don't remember the difference between resurgence and extinction, join the rest of it, or resurgence and what's the other one? Response spontaneous recovery, you can join the rest of us um, because no one really understands it's a joke. Just go watch the videos. I'm just not gonna explain it here. Um, and also establish stimulus control of the communication response. Let's see, what else? Oh shit, there was something else. Oh, I swore. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often anymore. There's something, oh, this is great. Okay, so this is another side note. One of those things is a long video because why not? Um, this is not to say that conduct training only in a controlled set will be sufficient. Conducting FCT a single training environment will consistently result... Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you notice that? My printing cut off a little bit with some extra words. And those extra words become very important sometimes. Um will consistently result in clinical acceptable levels of generalization if well wait a minute it's the word not is cut out here so be really cautious when you're reading journal articles folks that you don't misrepresent it because one word is missing or your printer sucks one word it took me like i even went whoops like i couldn't figure it out and i realized that this whole thing's been cut off so totally another unrelated thing which seems to be the issue with this video but there you go that's functional for in the damn video, Brad. <laughs> Good job saying in the video. Woohoo! <laughs>